Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I am super excited to share with you the fascinating story of the golden boy of Argentina. I am speaking about Faustino Oro. You probably haven't heard his name, but that will change today. He is nine years old. He is rated 2800 on chess.com. He is the youngest ever person in history to cross 2200 ELO, and he is 12 points away now, just a month later from crossing 2300 Fide Elo. In this video, I'm going to show you four of his games, three that he's played on chess.com where he's crushed grandmasters and one where he beat an international master over the board. He is the pride of Argentina. And as they say in Argentina, muchachos. And before we jump into the games, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, quite fittingly, Babel. Folks, why do you watch me? Chess. But you know, many people around the world have also told me they watch me to improve their English. That's because learning new languages is both useful and fun, especially on Babbel, which is a top language learning app in the world. Now, I've been practicing my Spanish for a while now. I can say things like, ¿Dónde está el baño, por favor? ¿Quieres jugar ajedrez conmigo? Y ahora voy a hablar español por el resto de este anuncio. Uh, no, just kidding, I'm not that good yet. But if I keep using Babbel, then I will be, because on Babbel, the languages are both informative and practical, made by real language learning experts. ¿Qué casa tan colorida? La puerta es verde. Look, I'm studying. What color is the door at Frida Kahlo's house? Green. La puerta es verde. And right now it's spring, folks. Winter is over. It's a time to reinvent yourself. Get out there, learn a language for the first time, or practice one that you were learning in the past. Folks, you know the drill. I love Babbel, and if you want to get started today, click the link in the description or scan the QR code, and you can get 60% off your Babbel subscription. And let me know in the comments below whatever language you're interested in learning or where in the world you're watching me from. Now let's get back to the video. So game number one. Faustino's got the white pieces, and he's playing against Mr. Tataglia, which is not anybody's legal name. That's not what it says on his passport. I believe that's uh, Grandmaster Kozak from, uh, from Hungary. And um, a lot of Faustino's online games and practice come in Title Tuesday. I've actually never played him, uh, thank God. Uh, but he gets to play a lot of Grandmasters, and... When they play online, Grandmasters, especially in Title Tuesday, when they see that, you know, they're like a 200-point favorite, they're going to play offbeat Sicilians. Now, what I've noticed about Faustino is his repertoire is very good with white and black, but he's got a very sophisticated playing style. So if you play nonsense against him, he's going to punish you. If you play, play good stuff against him, he's not going to melt. He's a very good attacker and defender. He knows when to be tactical. He knows when to be positional. And he keeps his nerves. I mean, he's literally the perfect prototype chess player. So this Sicilian is offbeat and not very good because it allows white to hit the knight. It allows white to occupy the center. Is it losing? No. But Faustino, like I said, if you play a stupid line against him, he's going to know how to take advantage. And this is how you take advantage against the Nimsovich Sicilian. And then you can choose which way you're going to castle your king. So knight c6, bishop f4. Uh, and uh, Kozak plays e6 temporarily blocking in this bishop, uh, and this bishop will probably go to e7, and black will castle. So now we have queen d2, queen c7, and you'll notice that white is not committing the king yet. White is finishing the development. Could he have gone long here? Probably. All right, but bishop d3, a6, and instead Faustino plays short castle. So he's not going for long castle. Like, folks, you don't have to invite me twice to play long castles in this position. I am an aggressive chess player. Like, if I can castle long, I'm going to do it, right? He, he doesn't, though. He just plays short castle. Like I said, he's got a <coughs> very sophisticated playing style. Black plays h6. Maybe in the future, black is going to play here. He doesn't bring his rooks. He doesn't overcommit any pawns. He just plays bishop g3. He just waits. He's just letting his opponent play a move. His opponent plays b5. That's a pretty big commitment. Rook d1. Like, you know what I would play if my opponent played b5? I would play b3, which is not a good move. Like, I mean, it's not a bad move, but you don't need to play rook d1 because he's not afraid of c4. He's not afraid of this move because he's just going to play bishop e4. So bishop b7 played by black. And now queen e2. Do you know what the idea of queen e2 is? Queen e2 looks unbelievably dumb. What is the point of queen e2? The point of queen e2 is that in the future, white can play this. White can, he is sliding his queen out of the way to make room for his knight in the future, maybe c4. I mean, I would never in a million years play the move queen e2. And like this dude, he's nine and his positional abilities are really, really strong. Notice how black is also trying to get aggressive without com committing his king. Now we have bishop e4, like at some point, black is gonna have to commit the king. He plays h5, Faustino right on cue, h4, stops the attack, 
and now drops the knight back to h2 so that he can reroute it this way in the future if necessary. Now we have long castle and the position is locked. But white is better. Why is white better? Because black has run out of pawn play. Black is really struggling to move. He's really overextended. A lot of his pawns are too far and at some point he's going to have to do something here and it's going to be a, a, a rough position. He lashes out with d5 and Faustino, like, like, ultra precise. En passant, trades, trades everything and just comes back. Doesn't rush. Notice how he, he's only moved one pawn two, two ranks forward in the current position. He's going to g3, he just wants h5. Black just has too many weaknesses. So Black tries to force the issue again. Faustino just trades bishops. Trades bishop, brings the knight out. Not rushing, patient, slowly removing his opponent's play. Queen to d4, rook slides out of the way, he takes the pawn. He's done all this without moving a single pawn, it feels like. He moved one pawn to freeze his opponent's pawns, queen back, Knight back, and now he plays one pawn move, which is to kick the knight out. Brings the king up a square, pins the knight to the queen, and he ends the game with surgical precision. Rook takes e5. And black resigns because whatever he takes with, knight d7 is coming. If queen e5, knight d7. If rook e5, queen e5, queen e5, and then knight d7. I mean, he made a 2900 rated GM look like it wasn't even a close match. A... He barely moved his pawns. It's just a, a, a perfect positional game. I was just absolutely floored at this. And the thing is, he was doing this against some of the best grandmasters. Like, I struggle to beat these players. You know what? I'm going to open up Dimitri. I mean, I've played Dimitri a handful in Bullet. I've beaten him in Bullet. I'm 9 and 12 against him. In Blitz, it's like 6 nothing him. I mean, I don't beat these guys in Title Tuesday. So this is a game where Faustino had white. It was an advanced caro. Okay, it wasn't a Sicilian. H4, tall variation, beautiful stuff. A main line, knight d2, knight f3. This has all been played many, many times before. And you'll just notice, like in this game, white has to move his pawns a lot. Uh, he's playing just good, solid, balanced position. Rook d8, a4 taking some space. Bishop a3 trading the bishops. And position's just equal. I mean, it's nothing special. What's special is like how the game proceeds from here. All right, it's rooks and knights. Rooks, knights, and pawns, no queens, no bishop. Faustino centralizes his knight. It's a very tense fight. Rook d5, you know, black, black plays rook d8. Very, very tense position. And now uh, Dimitri starts doing what a lot of grandmasters do. start overtaking the game, right? So he's going to start overtaking his young opponent. He takes on d4. Take, 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 take. And just looks like white is a pawn down. I mean, it just looks like Dimitri's won a pawn, okay? He stockpiled pressure on, on, on the, on the d-pawn. And on the rook, and a lot of people would panic here, myself included. Faustino just moves out of the way. All right, gives up the pawn on d4, and he's not even worse. I mean, he's just not even worse. The knight is bad, the b6 pawn is weak, the a pawn will be an asset, and if this falls, this falls, and if that falls, that falls. How did this happen? How did it happen? Now, here Faustino plays a move that makes me think he will 100% be a grandmaster. What would I play in this position? I might play a5, I might play rook a1. You know what he plays here down a pawn? He trades the rooks. Why? Because this endgame is not losable. It's just fa a5. He correctly evaluates that despite temporarily being a pawn down, his king is further advanced than black's king, and black's king can't even get close, so he's just going to go here and take... And despite being a full pawn down, he's playing for a win in an endgame. To be a pawn down in an endgame is bad. To be a pawn down in an endgame against the Grandmaster is very bad. To be a pawn down in an endgame against the Grandmaster and be playing for a win is unheard of. It doesn't make sense. King d3. And it's still equal according to Stockfish. But give it a few moves. And suddenly, Black might lose his second pawn. And he still has drawing chances. But Faustino, sophisticated, cool, calm, and collected, wins the pawn from, two pawn from a pawn down to a pawn up. It's still not over, but he defends everything, brings his king now all the way up as black is trying to run his king around, king d4, king c5. We're going in. This is unbelievable. I mean, again, it's a second game that I have shown you 
He's just completely from start to finish outplaying a grandmaster. This time he's outplaying him from a position of weakness. It's just unbelievable. I mean, like I was looking at this game, oh, my jaw was on the floor. Now, Black did not resign. Never resign when there's a knight. Also, Black is tilted. Faustino, very clean, gets to an end game. And uh, he simplifies in a way that you should simplify. He goes here, king e4. Look at this, sacrificing his queen. I mean, this is just flashy stuff. No need for this, but he's winning the king and pawn end game. And they play till mate, actually, uh, which is kind of funny. Uh, but, and also obviously white only has two seconds, so it takes a little while, don't worry, he knows how to not stalemate, and, uh, he, he, he wins. Uh, here you can have a debate as to whether or not it's, uh, you know, the black should have resigned, but you see white only has one second on the clock, basically, so it's okay. It's okay to play for a flag and blitz. I mean, folks, th th this was unbelievable when I saw this game. I was like, I mean, he lost the pawn, and he was not even worse, and he was clever enough to trade into an endgame where his king, I mean, this is, I would have never played like this. I mean, this kid has more poise and patience than I do, and, and, and he's one-third my age. He's nine. I'm 27. Like, I'm still gonna be like, I gotta, I gotta trade pieces. And he just, well, actually, I would, I would not trade pieces. He trades the pieces and effortless. And, you know, like I said, he does this with white or with black, like he doesn't mind. You know, he was playing uh, French Grandmaster Etienne Bacro also online, and he, you know, they 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 had a they had a very very locked opening position, and in this game, Faustino did not do very well in the opening. All right, he was not super familiar. White got a very active aggressive position, and as you can see, black is you know being being pushed backwards, and black only has thirty seconds on the clock. I mean, I mean, I would lose this position in the next seven moves. Um, I would play here. Okay, already he's much better. Then I would play knight d7, stopping f6. You know, then, then, then back row would go here. Then he would, like, sacrifice on, on h6. Look at what this kid... The way this kid defends this position is otherworldly. 30 seconds on the clock, 9 years old. Plays h5, uses his own king's pawn to defend. Back row plays bishop f4, the queen goes back. Now the knight is still hanging. Back row plays f6. So, if you take the knight, of course I go here and I win. It's defended by the rook, right? He just opens up his king. Now, he's losing. Black is losing. But only if white plays the absolute best move. Like, if white is stockfish, black is gonna lose. So, he sacrifices his rook. If you take... Knight f6 is a devastating attack. So, what does Faustino do after take rook e7? With 15 seconds on the clock, he takes the knight. He takes the knight in 5 seconds. Now, white is like, wait a minute, can I take the rook? Can I take this rook? What do I do? He takes this rook, now queen d8, take, take, and when the dust settles, black is better. Somehow, he managed to completely fend off. Like, look at the assault coming in. And he manages to completely just... Did, did white miss a win? Unqu of course! But that's, that's chess, that's life. It's just insane, and, and now... Now everything is fine. Now everything is fine. But you know, you know, n everything is not just fine because Faustino takes a pawn. He has seven seconds on the clock. He's going to play this for a win. Many people, including myself, would be fine with a draw at this point. He brings his queen forward. He brings his knight forward. He doesn't worry. Queen block. King g7. White is still trying to open up the position. King is safe. Knight centralized. And here comes, here comes black's knight and black's bishop. And white's only got two seconds on the clock, so of course the rest of the game is pandemonium with queen e5. And he goes to an endgame again. He is comfortable in the endgame. Here comes his knight. King g6. Knight d3 check. And uh, of course it's still, it's still very complicated, but in this position, white's clock ran out. White had to play knight d8 and try to continue eating the pawns, but he went on to win this game. I mean, a, a game where... 15 seconds on the clock and it j just a monstrous attack coming towards his king and he just defends it like perfectly i mean like to the just i was floored when i saw this game but that's online well you would be happy to know that this success carries over to games that he's played over the board. He recently played a tournament in Argentina. There's a lot of tournaments in South America in Argentina and Chile and in, uh, in Brazil, uh, I think Peru has some chess tournaments. South American 
uh, continent is uh, very rich with chess culture. So, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they love their ajedrez. And uh, he, I mean, he gets a chance to play some very, very good title players. And this was a game that he played in January in the Perez Open. And his opponent is named uh, Jaime Romero Barreto from Venezuela. And you will really enjoy this game because, again, it just shows you the poise. Like, this kid is just playing normal, boring chess, understanding that, like, sometimes you can't get all the tactics. A lot of kids love tactics. This dude doesn't mind. He's like, all right, take the pawn, knight g5, all right, we got a trade. I got to play a little bit of ugly defense against knight f6 check and bishop b7. Queen c8, no problem. Absolutely no problem at all. White plays rookie one, black continues developing, b3, and now bishop b2. And here is the most impressive thing, I mean, by far. So white is going to play bishop here, f4, queen h5. In this position, Faustino starts overplaying, outplaying his 2400 rated opponent. First, he puts a pawn in the center. Then he attacks with his f-pawn 2. And then he trades the bishops and centralizes the bishop on f6. Now, it's a very tense position. Uh, White would love to play queen f3. You cannot rush with queen f3 because e4 is winning, right? That's not how he won the game. Um, but after bishop f6, White played rook b1. So now that's no longer going to be a thing. So black plays queen b7 check. We have queen 2 f3, we have e4, and the players enter a forcing sequence after takes. Bishop takes b2, rook b2, and now Faustino plays knight e5. Okay? Very tense moment in the game. He has not taken back on e4. He is attacking the queen, trying to remove it so that then he can play like this. Now, if the queen goes to c3, uh, f e4, you cannot take the knight because e3 is discovered check, and then this comes in and uh, white is losing everything. But knight e5 is a very, very tense moment. You can play queen f4, queen e3, queen c3. They all seem okay. White plays queen f4 and black plays rook e8. So Faustino enters a forcing sequence of moves against a player 200 points higher than him on elo. Probably not by skill. I think by skill this dude is already like 2350, 2400 strength. Very tense position, right? So here, white has to just not rush, stay patient and apparently play a move like rook bb1 so that then you can bring the rook here and try to like is like knight c4 just try to kind of neutralize the black position instead white makes an inaccuracy white plays the move f3 now this move is inaccurate because it's actually a weakening of the position you would think that you're putting a pawn somewhere it's defended three times it's not true the reason it's not true is that it opens up the second rank and Faustino, like a surgeon, queen c6. What is the idea of queen c6? I don't understand. Well, if you take on f5, knight g6, I hit this, I hit this. So you cannot do that, okay? Since you cannot play e takes f5, what can you play? Why can't you play c4? Fork, okay? Why can't you play, I don't know, rook e3, knight g6, queen g5, h6, queen h5, f4. The knight is defended and black is attacking. If you try to get out of the way, I have queen c3 and I just win the game, okay? I'm going to win everything over here. I probably have something even better. Rook e5 first and then queen c3. So the point is, in this very tense position, with the snap of your fingers, this little man plays queen c6, takes the pawn on c2 because white needs to defend himself, plays queen to d3, and the second that white takes, he doesn't take back, he slides out of there, and white cannot stop knight d3. This is completely ridiculous. This man just infiltrates with his queen and slides out? There's nothing you can do. The triple fork is coming. I'm, I'm going to make a move that, that forks three pieces. You can move your queen. It doesn't change anything because I'm going to take the knight. You can move a rook. doesn't change anything because I'm going to fork. Crazy. The mechanics of the position all favor black. He plays knight d3. He trades. He trades. Rookie two check. And he takes on f5. And he's just up a rook for a knight. 
And look how clinically he converts this. He hunts down his opponent's pawns, starts bringing his king. White can walk in a little bit, all good. King g8 has to defend himself. Trades, blocks the white rook from coming in. a5, rook b5, a4, rook d4, and just walks down with the c-pawn, and the game is over. Sacrifices his rook, rook d1, c1, and this was his highest ever over the board win. He defeated a 2367 player. Make no mistake, I will tell you when he beats a grandmaster, he hasn't played many grandmasters over the board yet. I think he's played like one or two max. Um, this dude is going to be a, a problem. Um, he's, uh, he's so good. <laughs> like, he is nine years old, the youngest ever player to reach 2200 fide. He is currently 2288. Okay, so he will probably be the youngest player to ever reach 2300. He very well could be the youngest player to ever reach 2400. And I don't know, Argentina might very well have a, uh, a messy of chess pretty soon. Too early to tell, but incredible to see. And he, this, this kid is so strong. Maybe I'll play him in a few games. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Get out of here.